Uh, I'm now very pleased to be able to invite Margaret Burgess, who's the Scottish Housing, Minister, Housing and Welfare Minister, to speak. But in introducing her, I'd just like to make two very brief points. One of the reasons I'm very pleased to invite her here today on behalf of the Scottish Government is because at the International Union of Tenants Congress in Krakow last year, we heard a lot about the good work that had been happening in Scotland and the way it helped inspire other people throughout Europe and throughout the world. And secondly, the International Union Tenants Congress for 2016 will be held in Scotland. So I'm particularly pleased for those two reasons to invite Margaret today. Margaret, would you like to come and talk to the group? Thanks. Uh, thank you and good morning everyone. Um, I am absolutely delighted to be here this morning to talk about the Scottish uh, Social Housing Charter empowerment into practice and particularly today International uh, Tenants Day. But I'm going to start by mentioning the recent Scottish referendum which I'm sure most of you have heard about and people were asking me about earlier. The one thing the referendum did, it didn't, get, it didn't give me the result that I wanted, so I'll be honest about that. I was hoping for a very different result. However, what it did do was get the people of Scotland engaged in politics like never before. 85% of the population voting, a record turnout anywhere in the UK. And that type of participation in a national debate was exciting. It motivated people to get involved many who had never done so before. And I see that same kind of enthusiasm and engagement with the tenants groups and tenants organisations that I meet on a regular basis uh, when I travel throughout Scotland. And in Scotland, we believe that everyone should live in a good quality, affordable, sustainable home and have the opportunity to be part of a thriving community. We believe that good quality housing can help give people a better chance in life. Better housing can lead to improved educational achievement, improved health and well-being for young and old alike, and a better environment to live in. We also want to ensure that government and public services focus on creating a more successful country with opportunities for all of Scotland to flourish. And Scotland's a small country, it's a very beautiful country, and we have just over five million people. It has a diverse housing system which is made up of owner occupation, the private rented sector, and the social housing sector. 24% of Scotland's total housing stock is social housing. Around 590,000 households live in homes owned and managed by social landlords. So you can see how important this is for our country. And by social landlord, we mean housing associations and cooperatives, which are independent organisations providing housing accommodation on a non-profit making basis. And local authorities or councils, which you may know as municipal housing. And in Scotland, we place great importance on tenants' rights and every social housing tenant is entitled to a Scottish secure tenancy. It's very important to me that someone can stay in a tenancy for life if that's what they choose to do so. And Scotland has a long tradition of putting the interests of tenants at the very heart of policy and decision making and we're very proud of that tradition. Our approach to participation and empowerment is based on sharing information, ideas and power it's founded in culture of mutual, of mutual trust, respect and partnership between tenants, social landlords and the Scottish Government. And our commitment in, to participation in Scotland is set out in law. This gives tenants rights to be consulted in housing matters affecting them, gives tenant organisation rights of recognition and involvement, and social landlords must have a scheme to register tenant organisations, giving them a recognised place in the participation process, and a tenant participation strategy developed in partnership with their tenants and tenant organisations. And at the time, this was really groundbreaking legislation, and I am pleased that we're still leading the way in our commitment and approach to tenant participation and empowerment. 
In 2010, we introduced the Scottish Social Housing Charter and for the first time created an independent housing regulator in Scotland, which is accountable to the Scottish Parliament. The regulator has one legal objective, that is to safeguard and promote the interests of current and future tenants, homeless people and others who use the services provided by social landlords. Its priorities are good outcomes for tenants and the effect of governance and financial health of housing associations. It also reports annually on how landlords are performing against the Charter. I believe it's important that we have a well-regulated social housing sector that tenants can have confidence in. And Scotland's first housing charter was introduced on the 1st of April 2012 and was an important departure for social housing in Scotland as it focused entirely on the experience of tenants. The charter contains 16 outcomes and standards that describe in clear language what any good landlord should be delivering for their tenants. With each outcome, the standard describes from the perspectives of tenants themselves. It was developed through extensive consultation with tenants for, for tenants and focuses on the housing services that are important to them. The 16 outcomes and standards cover a wide range of issues, many of which are included in your International Union of Tenants Charter and the European Declaration on Responsible Housing and code of conduct. And your declaration broadly, broadly sets out our own approach in Scotland. And I'm absolutely delighted that I was able to sign that declaration this morning on behalf of the Scottish Government. And I would particularly like to highlight the participation outcome in the Charter, which says that tenants and other customers find it easy to participate and influence their landlord's decisions at a level that they feel comfortable with and I'm sure that's something that you'll all wholeheartedly agree with. This outcome describes what landlords should achieve by meeting their legal duties on tenant participation. It covers how landlords should gather and take account of tenants' views and priorities, how they shape their services to reflect these views, and how they help their tenants to participate and influence their landlord's decision. And that underpins our approach to tenant empowerment in Scotland. The Charter empowers tenants to hold landlords to account for the services they deliver and requires landlords to explain their performance to their tenants. And just as importantly, it provides the basis for the Scottish Housing Regulator to assess and report on how well landlords are performing by identifying where they are doing well and where they need to improve. The Regulator can also require poorly performing landlords to improve their performance and to me, this is absolutely critical in ensuring that all tenants, wherever they stay or whoever their landlord is, get good quality, efficient services, which gives good value for money. We are already seeing many landlords achieving the standards and outcomes of our charter. And by doing so, they're delivering real improvements in the quality and value of services they provide. The regulator has developed a web-based interactive landlord report which lets tenants compare the performance of their landlord with other landlords. It lets tenants see what landlords are doing well and getting right, and where there's room for improvement. And I believe that by giving tenants this information, it will help improve practice, services and standards year on year. The regulators report also helped the Scottish Government to ensure that public investment in new social housing goes to those landlords shown by the regulator to be providing good quality services for their existing tenants. <coughs> Many landlords and their tenants are also now developing ways for tenants to scrutinise landlords' performance against the Charter using performance information. And tenant scrutiny is key to empowering tenants further and enabling them to challenge poor performance and hold their landlords to account. And I am pleased that the Scottish Government is supporting the development of scrutiny arrangements in Scotland by funding a three-year learning programme called Stepping Up to Scrutiny. This programme gives tenants the skills to understand and analyse information about landlord performance. It gives them the expertise and confidence to work in partnership with their landlords on improving the services they provide 
with tenants at the heart of the process. This is only one strand of a whole host of work being done in Scotland to develop the skills and knowledge required to scrutinise performance. It's an exciting time for tenants in Scotland and they're enthusiastic about the Charter and the opportunities it gives them. There are around 550 independent tenant organisations in Scotland and I am always impressed by their commitment and enthusiasm and the amount of time they give freely to make their communities a better place to live. The Scottish Government is keen to ensure that tenants' views are valued and heard at a national level. We therefore support and work in partnership with nine tenant-led regional networks covering all of Scotland and consult the, that network in developing housing policy. And I meet with them regularly. In fact, I'm meeting with them uh, in Edinburgh tomorrow. And this gives me a chance to hear from tenants directly the impact that our po housing policies are making in their communities. <coughs> And I really appreciate and value their involvement over the years and know their views have, in, have influenced housing policy for the better in Scotland. And I want to ensure that tenants continue to be involved in debate and discussion about housing in Scotland and over Europe. Housing is and remains a key priority for the Scottish Government and we are committed to preserving and expanding our social housing stock. We are committed to helping local communities to flourish, become stronger, safer places to live and offer improved opportunities and a better quality of life because we recognise the important role that housing plays in this. And housing is not just about bricks and mortar and good buildings. Housing is about people and about communities. And the way to improve communities is for those that live in those communities are involved in those communities to have a real say in what happens. And that's the, the view that the Scottish Government holds. It's early days for our Charter, but I'm confident that with each passing year and as we get more information from the regulator, we will see these real improvements in areas that matter most to tenants. And that, for me, is the real benefit of tenant, tenant empowerment. And I'm delighted, it's been mentioned by a couple of speakers this morning, that the International Union of Tenants will be holding its next Congress in Scotland in 2016. And I can assure you all, you will receive a very warm welcome. And I hope you'll get the opportunity to see some of the sights of Scotland while you're there. It's been a pleasure for me to be here today. I hope very much that you enjoy the rest of your conference. I've looked at your agenda and it's very interesting. I'm just sorry that I can't stay here um, to hear it all, and, but I will get feedback. We have Scottish Government officials here who will be reporting back to me um, on the outcome of this conference. But thank you again for inviting me here and enjoy your conference. Thank you. Thank you very much.